Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the July 2nd Town Council meeting. It's uh, 7 p.m. Please all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you lead us, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as I like to have a moment of silence. Uh, we have two folks who passed this week, uh, Michael Balin, who was the son of Michelle and Mike Balin and brother of Gianna Balin, all of whom are employees of the town of Winthrop. Uh, so we send our condolences to the Balin family. And also Shirley Donovan, the grandmother of uh, Pete Christopher, our counselor. Thank you. Please call the roll. Council Ringman here. Council Calla mm -hmm. present. Council Christopher. Yeah. Council Boncori. Council Frino. Yep. Vice President Vittieri. Yeah. Council Laconti. Present. President Be President Vecchio. Present. Thank you. I'd like to take a motion to approve the June 18, 2019 Town Council meeting minutes as circulated. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. The June 18, 2019 Town Council Joint Meeting of the Library Trustee Meeting Minutes has circulated. So moved. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. Yeah. <laughs> Public comment. Donna Riley. Um, Mr. Chairman uh, and Town uh, Council members, um, I will be out of state on July 15 and uh, unable to make the planning board meeting, but I just wanted to express my concern about the corner. I think our town government is turning relative to involving everyday citizens in the government process. My remarks focus on the recent June 27, 2019 appeals board decision um, about the, the 20 um, my coffee is boring, believe it or not, decision about the uh, 20 Cottage Park Road that, that it's not purely residential aid, but the same property is to a small degree in the central business district which was <coughs> decided on the 27th that a portion of 20 Cottage Park Road was uh, in the business district. Consequently, there was no need to request a variance for the two and a half story building restriction if that plan building abuts the residential property. My concerns, aside from the fact that real outreach to abutters, neighbors, and small business owners did not happen in the 2014 effort to redefine the central business district, the following are specific concerns that I have. Number one, neighbors put forth a petition on May 27, 2018 that was never heard or addressed concerned about all forthcoming building projects in Winthrop Center, the petition dealt with concerns about height, density, side and rear distances from a residential home, and realistic parking. On January 15, 2019, the council, with the exception of Councilor Goncori, voted to indefinitely postpone the petition. Conclusion, resident petitions seem not to be taken so seriously anymore Secondly, in October 2018, and again on 1-15-19, the town manager promised to, quote, re-engage with the possibility for repeal or amendment zoning. This has yet to happen, except for the hiring of an outside consultant who'd like to include even more private homes in the center business district. Thirdly, finally, the town failed to provide the town official to verify that for the past hundred years, the property at 20 Cottage Park Road has been residential. My husband, Tom Riley, and our attorney, attorney Jacqueline Doherty, were the only persons equipped with data to document that 20 Cottage Park Road is zoned as residential A. Maps from 1939, 1970, 1974, 87, and 2006 were referenced to verify this important fact. These maps were rendered in color by our own internationally known architect illustrator Frank Costantino. Instead, the appeals board dismissed any real map history 
and allowed a technologically devised PowerPoint presentation by the developer to determine their decision that 20 Cottage Park Road has a very small portion of business zone on the property. This decision, after all the town map references, building official Allegee's April 19 residence disposition, and then town manager Delahanty's January 18 definition that 20 Cottage Park Road was in fact residential A, the appeals board voted otherwise. Suddenly, after 68 years, 20 Cottage Park Road turns into a mixed use piece of property. Where was any official from the town to present the true map and zoning data at that June 27th appeals board meeting? I'm left, and many of our neighbors are left, with a disheartening feeling that, except for voicing our concerns at this public forum section of the meetings, the petitions are useless and not heard. Promises for involvement will not happen. And 100 years zoning documentation means nothing. Who's representing the residents? Is the charter being upheld? I can only faintly trust that true resident inclusion and wisdom as to the far-reaching impact of any development, particularly in Winthrop Center, be part of any prospective building in the town. I thank you for your consideration and this opportunity to speak. Thank you, Donna. Donna Segretti, Riley, Precinct 5. Sorry. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Tom? Thank you. I'm Tom Riley, Precinct 5. I want to go back a little history because I'm, I'm really upset at the way this has been handled, not handled, mishandled, and shoved aside over the last couple of years. Two years ago, members of our neighborhood started to come up here and voice our concerns over two issues. The zoning that was passed in 2014 with the height restrictions, with a parking requirement that we thought was totally inadequate, with no setbacks from the residential properties. We voiced those concerns, and then we, we also talked about the uh, the map that appeared in the master plan that showed the residential properties being in a distorted a map, the zoning map, and it showed that the, the, these places were, were in fact included in the business district. Terry Delahanty heard all of that when he was town manager and went out through an exhaustive examination of all of the votes of a town meeting, went through a number of various documents, made a conclusion that no homes are included in the district. When that happened, I stood up right here and said it would be incumbent on the council to do something definitive to make sure that that's incorporated in some form of document so that it's clear and understandable so that nobody can come up and find a loophole and that we know that this is in fact the case. And to do it in a time when there's no developer looking for a project, do it in advance of that, do it outside of that so it's not colored by a dispute with the, the intentions of the developer. So nothing happened. So in May, we decided we would avail ourselves of the clause in the charter that allows for petitions. I was on the charter commission that wrote that. Okay? We wanted to have a way in which people could come and bring their concerns to the council and have them dealt with. Okay? We asked to, to come up with a discussion of all of the points that Donna just mentioned, density, height, setbacks, and parking, three quarters of a parking space for a one unit, 1.25 for a two, and a $2,000 buyout of any parking requirements at all per space just didn't seem to make sense to us. We understood that there were limitations for what the council could do for a variety of reasons. I said, look, can we just convene some sort of forum, some kind of discussion, bring in the public, Bring in the neighbors. The neighbors feel that they weren't involved in the 2014 decision. Can we do something to try to correct that? I asked that repeatedly over and over. In October, we're given a promise for a review. That was going to be a committee. In November, the review was going to be the Board of Appeals and the, and the Planning Board. In January, there's a request now for funds to, fund, to, to hire a consultant. But who do we hire? We hired the person who drew the map, the misleading, distorted map in the, in, the, in the master plan that began the whole controversy. We go forward in March, the, 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 the position's dismissed using a, a parliamentary, parliamentary gimmick. Okay? But finally in April, the planning board holds a hearing 
on the matter. And hold a hearing on the, on the developer's petition to build the 1026. El Lagi comes up with a ruling that it's not, it's, it is adjacent to a, to a residential district. So now we've had two rulings, two different methodologies, two ways of coming at them, one looking at it legally from every vote of a town meeting in the previous maps, one looking at maps, possible things, and so forth. They both come to the same conclusion. But now we enter our consultant, and our consultant comes in with a bunch of distorted, misleading, that don't represent the zoning maps. I've given you maps, you, they think you all got them, that show the zoning, they show it consistently, the shape of the districts and so forth. They be no record, there's no, there's nothing in this stuff that Farm and Place did. But I get back to that in a minute. So the planning board goes through what they hear is that in early, in, in, on June 10th to make preliminary findings. Their findings, as we expected, were that the homes are not in the business district and that they, and the map should be drawn to show that. Two weeks later, the Board of Appeals, relying on one of Foreman Place's distortions and being convinced by their, by their attorney, skillfully, I might add, that that was in fact a zoning map, makes a determination that that property at 20 Cottage Park Road is not a residential district, it's a business district. We, yeah. I'm just astounded that this hasn't been, that I asked the council to take charge of this long ago because I didn't think that if, unless the council took charge of it, held the hearings, held the meetings, made some decisions and so forth, that things weren't being done. The, the council has decided to defer that to the administration. Okay? That's not working. Okay? I think it's time for the council to come up with and live up to its legislative duties, take charge of this issue, and move forward because we're not going to get anywhere at the current pace, and we're not going to get anywhere with this consultant. Consultant referred to people's private homes as obstacle buffers that deter from full development. Okay? Because if you can, again, if you draw the map and you don't include them, there's no two and a half story limit for being adjacent, so developers can play. So his solution put them in a business district. Don't consider. The, the things did. Just, just negate the thing that apparently the council had some idea that they wanted to minimize the impacts on residents when they cut one, they came up with two different methods of, of dimension story. But there had to be a reason for that. This developer, who's supposed to guide us to a solution, thinks that that's a bad idea, that that's, and that, that, that you should do everything to thwart that. So I'm fed up. I, I think it's time for the council to stand up, take charge, do it because it's not going to happen openly, fairly, honestly, or quickly unless that happens. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jack Dowd, Precinct 3. Uh, I've been coming to these meetings for two years. Uh, first, I was involved with the uh, project that many people wanted to put on Ingleside Park. <laughs> and I think I've proven to some extent that you can't put a residential uh, development on a park. I, I hope that the town council uses uh, Article 97 disposition of the land to process the use of the property at the side park. As far as the Senate, and that's when I became involved with the Senate business district, after I was told that they're going to put 200 units on the side park, I think everybody's seen the rendering of these uh, buildings 48 feet high, right on the sidewalk on Walden Street, Pauline Street, and Walden Mario. I haven't seen it lately, but I certainly saw it uh, at some point. Uh, as far as the Senate business district is concerned, uh, I think there's a small number of people that are practicing group narcissism, bringing in interlopers into the town to basically ruin the character of the town, starting with the center. Uh, they, they come in with a 58-foot development down to 48. We're going back and forth with this. Uh, it's, I've been to, uh, in the last two years, probably uh, 15 seacoast communities uh, in Massachusetts and Maine, New Hampshire. I've studied uh, dimensions 
layouts. Uh, the width of center is too small an area for 48 feet. Uh, if you go to these other places, the streets are 50 feet wide. Uh, the shadows won't be cast in the next door neighbor's windows. Uh, the way these centers are laid out is if you're in a, uh, an establishment, uh, you look out the window and you see blue sky. That's why they laid it out. These are 100 year old establishments. If the streets are wider, you can get away with a tall building, but not down in Winthrop Center. Um, I think this master plan that was proposed in 2014-17, whenever it was proposed, has changed. Uh, the master plan was uh, written so that you'd have business uh, uh, establishments at the center, and you'd have uh, people coming to the, um, the businesses that live in the center at two and a half stories. Now you have uh, a uh, parking garage under, I don't know how many square feet of building, 15,000 square feet. And if you give them the right to have a parking garage under the building, the next door neighbor in the business establishment will want to have a parking garage under his, because you've just seen that uh, the next door And then following, so it's a domino effect. And I mentioned this at a planning board meeting, and they said I was out of line. He, he said I wasn't, the chairman of the planning board said I wasn't talking reality. Well, the reality was the picture that he proposed, a building with a parking uh, lot under it. So now you're going to change the center from being uh, a business community to a parking lot. I just don't see where this master plan comes into play at this point. I, ho I hope you realize that it's a small group of people using uh, a, uh, a, a, a ordinance rewritten without anybody in the neighborhood uh, attending to help a very small number of developers. Thank you very much. Anyone else wish to be heard? I just have one question that bothers me. The appeal last week was of a decision that was made by a town official. It's under, it goes under appeal. I don't know why there wasn't anybody at that hearing charged with the task of explaining how that decision, what that decision was, and how it was made. There was no defense for it. I, I, I spent most of my career working in labor relations. Anytime we had to have a hearing on something, we made sure that the person who made the decision was there, or if they didn't, someone who could explain how and why the decision was made. That didn't happen. The, the, I, I don't, and I, I just, it, it, I don't know why, if someone says a, a firm decision and a firm ruling on a matter of that importance that was made by a town official that no one attends to explain or defend it. Is it general practice that uh, that a town uh, official goes to a to board no, of appeals? A town official and the council cannot influence any decision made by the board of appeals. Yes. No town official nor town council member is supposed to attend meetings of the Board of Appeals. That is out of line. That is, they are an independent body that is tasked with making appeal decisions. In many communities... That's not, that's not true. That, that's not true. Okay. That, may be, that may be a policy now. It is. It, it, well, I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I've been town, part of town government since 1970. And that wasn't the case. The building inspector would always would attend the Board of Appeals hearings and he would explain why and how he made the decision. He, that's not there to argue with, he's just there to explain it. And there wasn't anybody there. The council members are free to attend Board of Appeals hearings. They're not free to interfere with them. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't be going to the, to the building inspector telling him how he should rule. But they certainly have the right to attend a, a meeting. That, I, that's just for business. I, I still don't understand it, and I, 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 I really don't accept the answer. Hi, Jean Coughlin, uh, Precinct 5. I wasn't going to speak tonight, but you can hear the frustration of my neighbors, uh, the Rileys. Um, I think they've summed it up um, you know, perfectly, how, but I'm just going to tell you how I feel. Um, that night at planning board, after all the time and effort of three years, begging and asking and going to not only town council, 
but planning board um, many nights on my own, many nights that they canceled it, and I sat there alone asking, please watch out for the residents. Please watch out for the town. Please be careful what you let happen, because you're going to set a precedent, and then all hell's going to break loose. Well, that's what you're going to happen now. We were at a meeting that we were just dismissed, disregarded. They talked, blah, 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 blah. Um, Mr. Cipolletta, um, you know, very good job by him, very calculating, precise PowerPoints with overlays and kind of dropped into, and you can perceive them any way you want. And if any of you were at that meeting, you'd be as confused as we were. What's her rear? What's her side? She has four sides and a one rear setback that she put back to right on top of 20 Cottage Park Road. Um, she went back with a setback behind like where Kids Only is and behind East Boston Savings Bank, which to me makes no sense. Why wouldn't you have given the relief or the variance and not been on top of somebody with gas meters? You know, put that, uh, uh, reverse that, but she counted four sides and was very calculating the way they positioned it and dropped it into place to get their answer. He said to them, can we reopen? Um, we don't think we're going to have to need a variance after you see our beautiful PowerPoint presentation. Well, we saw it, and there were four different things with what Jolana said, very fuzzy lines, but you can see that they dropped in place with partial areas of people's homes. So I guess if they did it to her, they'll do it to me next. I'll be one of those, um, <coughs> what Mr. Riley called it, a okay. butter. A convenient butter. A convenient butter, a, a buffer. I'm a convenient buffer. That's what I am um, after paying residential real estate taxes. And I know for a fact that at 20 Cottage Park Road, they've been there, they were there a very long time. She, her father and mother were there way before her. And um, to hear the news that their business zoned, after all the times we've been coming and asking, it was just sort of like we were just dismissed, that's our answer, you know, goodbye, get out. And that's really basically how we felt that night. So you could hear my frustration, um, how upsetting it was to be treated like that after, you know, we're pretty good people, all of us, and we try to do the right thing here. And to just see the way it was calculated and put, so that, no, she didn't need a variance. She cut back on her parking spaces by seven. That's what she did do. She didn't change the thing. She's still three feet away from the girl's driveway. And um, she's going four stories without a variance. And um, she's going to pay $14,000 for the parking spaces that you allowed her to do with the 2014 ordinances. And she's happy to do it. You might have already got a check from her. But um, that's the way I see it. I just feel like we were dismissed disregarded and just um, pushed by the wayside. We didn't matter. We really didn't matter that night. Their decision was made, it was clear, and they were there to get the job done that night, and uh, and that's what they did, all for the developer, but not for any of the residents. So thank you for hearing me out. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be here? Nick Steelers, Precinct 5. Uh, we've been coming to these for three years, and uh, there was no compromise here. The same thing we said three years ago uh, took place the last couple of meetings. Uh, looking back at everything and the way everything took place, uh, there, there should have been a lot more input by the neighbors. As Mrs. Coffin said, the developers got every single thing they asked for. And to me, Mr. Dow, on April 3rd, 2018, stood up at Mr. Becky's forum that he ran and questioned the $2,000 parking spot that a developer can buy and a resident can't. And Mr. Dow asked for that to be taken off the books immediately. And there were many other things that transpired. I hope at this time that the council does invest some money in some impact study to see what's going to happen here. I also like the council to also invest some money because it seems like we're investing $30,000 to look at different things that have happened. I'd like the council to look at and have a professional come in and look at what is maximum density. What is maximum density? We are 
obviously, all of us were pro, we were pro development the whole time. We just felt that, you know, we should have been part of the process. And unfortunately, we were, we were not. Going all the way back to 2014. And uh, I hope that uh, there is some input in the future. Otherwise, you're going to have what everybody else has been saying. You're going to have runaway development. You've opened up Pandora's box for development. The only thing the public has left is hope. Uh, the council will will be judged uh, in the court of public opinion. That's what will happen here. Um, I've been involved in town politics, town government, different things throughout the years. I remember when we switched to our form of government, uh, there was a person that came from Watertown and she was adamant that we had a great form of the government and we had our town meeting. And, uh, I just hope that the developers are responsible. I hope that, because right now it looks like, you know, the whole center is not going to be the center that we in thought we were going to get, you know. The developer wanted 30 units, she got 30 units. We wanted less. The developers are going to come in and they're going to develop. And I don't know what kind of developments are going to go up, but I'll tell you one thing. This will go against your charter right here. And the developments will not be compatible with community character, 17.5. They will not be develop developments that will be compatible. I hope the developers have some type of sympathetic understanding for the neighbors and the residents. We're not big businesses. You know, we don't have the monetary means to take this to any other level. And I hope that the council acts as agents of the public and act in an ethical, responsible manner for their constituents. Anyone else wish to be heard? Right. Just respond to all those comments. Sure. Um, <clears throat> a couple things on, on Donna's first comment on the January 15th. The three of us did recuse ourselves and did not vote to to um, delay the petition to, you know, Council Bonco, he voted no, and three of us recused ourselves because of our situation, so we didn't vote um, to postpone, to indefinitely postpone the petition, so I just want to make that clear. And I will say to, to, to Tom, and, and I would have thought differently before today, because I read the charter more today, I, I think it does state in the charter that the Council I, I'm not speaking for department heads or anything, but I know the town council personally is not supposed to, I, I think we're entitled to go to meetings. I don't think we're entitled to sway our opinions in any way, shape, or form towards the appeals board. I do think, however, though, in section 2.7 that the town council does have the authority, I believe, to ask that the board of appeals comes before us to explain their decision. So we do have that authority, which, I would like to ask later in new business. Mm -hmm. um, Can I expand on, the, on that point? Just sure, so, well, I'm getting my thing. Sure. So, under Chapter 40A, which is zoning, under Mass General Law, Section 17, it's the next step that any person who feels aggrieved by the decision of an appeals board, um, it's the judicial review step. You take the decision to court and that is still open. In this case, there was a planning board decision which the Board of Appeals made a different decision on, and now if people would like to appeal it, just like the developer had the ability to appeal the decision of the planning board, it can be appealed to court. That but is, we can't ask the Board of Appeals to explain to us. You can ask them to explain it in a public forum, but you can't, they, the decision would be I'm fine. not saying yeah. the decision yep. would change. They, you can I'm request just, that. So yep. we can request. My other concern is, and I did ask in January at that meeting and subsequently, that we vote on this. Not that it's going to change anything now, but we vote on this center business district, on the zoning map. And we have motion comes before us all the time for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they're last minute. They're emergencies. We have to pass them. We have another chance to go over them, but we pass them. It's been four months. I don't see why a, a six-year-old kid could go down there and draw a map, and then we could decide. It's in front of the planning board. It's right been now. in front of the planning board for three months, Mr. Mm -hmm. Town Manager, and I think that's adequate time, more than adequate time. The it's planning been three board is years. working with the consultant to develop a map. They are 
It doesn't Jimmy take a rocket scientist. My opinion is it doesn't take a rocket scientist to go down there. It doesn't, that doesn't mean that we're going to approve that map. We can make adjustments, but get a map before us is what I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. Please let me speak. <clears throat> I also would like to have a clearer definition of what mixed use is. Because I believe my intention, my thought was it was commercial on the first floor and residential above. Mm -hmm. Not 25% commercial, 75% parking, and then... So I would like a clearer definition going forward. I don't know, I'm not saying this is well, it's a bad decision, a good decision, whatever, but I think it's very misinforming to the public and to me as a counselor, um, because I thought there could have been compromise made in a lot of areas and I would like to just get clearer definitions. I'm not saying anything about the Board of Appeals, but I would like to get a clearer definition. I'm not sure who we go to for that of what mixed use really is. I would like to get a an answer as to when we can expect a map in front of us to vote on. Um, it is my, on my side, I believe the planning board is voting on it at the next meeting. Yes, yeah, we're supposed to be voting on it, so it'll be in front of us the August 13th at our meeting. That will be new business, so we wouldn't be voting on it that night. Yeah, correct? Be if there's one, anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I can understand the frustrations. I really can. Um, because it seems like, and I'm not saying the decision would have been any different if we had made a map and made it residential. The, the Board of Appeals still had the right to give them a variance and, and every right to do that. But I just think it would be a lot better if we had clearer definitions of what we were actually doing and to try to take the people's word and to try to work with them. But that's all I had on that. So just to circle back on the developer, this was actually the third version of this project. The initial version did include more commercial on the first floor, which they changed that and included more parking based off of public feedback. Then the second version of it had no commercial on the first floor when it was talked about during site plan review in the fall. And I pushed back saying, I don't want just, I don't want parking only on the first floor. This is a business district. I would like some continuity to our business. So then they carved out spots and put commercial back in there. So there was a version of this that included significantly less parking and based off comments that they received, they shifted towards additional parking there because um, there is a, um, an idea in the area that there is a necessity for additional parking with any project. So they took that to heart and included additional parking. So now- The first version had no parking at all. Yeah, so we're kind of, we've given them differing viewpoints. Yeah, I, I think believe. originally they would have liked to have parking on the ground, but it wasn't economically feasible. Um, and I do understand that parking is needed. My concern is, you know, their attorney stated that these are units that they're marketing them to people that don't use parking. Why can't we use something like other cities and towns do and don't offer residential sticker to a person living in the unit? Therefore, not requiring the parking at all would alleviate the problems and concerns of the residents and gives us more of a commercial base. That's a good idea. I, I would be more than happy to pursue that, as I've referred to no, and previously. I know I talked to you about it before. And in the fall, my intention as a person who's run traffic and parking department previously, and I know uh, how parking is basically a sunk cost. It is something that takes up space and is used for less than 50% of the day, depending on where the spot is. Um, I would like to see less parking, full stop. I, I wish the site plan review that we saw in the fall included no parking in it. Well, just for clarity, I'm not saying no, I'm saying no parking with no residential sticker. I'm not saying no parking and bring cars to park on the street. No, I'm, I'm saying, saying I'm I would saying rather no. have because I think the developer would have been economically, it's way better for her to, instead of spending money I'm on saying parking no parking. Spaces. We will never solve any of our traffic issues if we continue to build parking for additional cars until we force people to make the decision to live in town if they want to live without a car, which I personally have made that decision previously, or they have to potentially live somewhere else where they can get parking. If that's the decision they have to make, instead of entertaining this idea that, well, we need them to have parking, yet we don't want to address our traffic issues going into town, I see it every morning when I come into town. I would like to reduce that. And I am working on mode shifts in terms of every possible avenue with this town so that we can try to reduce the number of cars on the road coming out of town because uh, the majority of people who work in this town do not work in Winthrop. They work in other local uh, municipalities. So I'm trying to alleviate the number of cars that we have on the road because that's the only way we will solve some of the traffic issues around here every morning. Any other counselor? Pete? 
Sure. Um, so I just, I, I know that there's a lot of concerns that people have, and I share a lot of the same concerns. I've been right there with you throughout the beginning, and, you know, we did get two rulings from the town that I think were in line with what a lot of people, and a lot of people have been looking at, and have been, um, it was aligned with what they thought. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, some people have said, why don't you just go down and start drawing lines all over the place? And I have a real issue with going, acting quickly, putting the cart before the horse and just drawing these lines just for the sake of getting them on the map. Because I heard from everybody two years ago when people just thought that that was done to them when people just thought that the master plan was a binding document and they said, geez, there's all these lines that have been drawn all around my houses and that was a major problem. And I think that there is consensus on the, uh, from the town's point of view as far as where we think those lines should be in that one corner of the center business district. But the fact of the matter is, is that the center business district stretches all the way from the bottom of Cottage Park Road in Somerset and goes all the way up to Pauline Street. It affects people on Somerset Ave, on Putnam Ave, um, Jefferson Ave. It, it's a huge parcel of land, and to just go, it, I don't feel comfortable saying, I'm gonna make a, you know, the, uh, the nine of us just go out there and draw a map. Um, I think that that's something that requires a lot more thought and a lot more time, and that's why I think that we need to take a few meetings with the planning board and sort of hash this out. Um, the other thing that I'd like to talk about is um, the issue of procedure. Um, I think that this has been a crazy procedure. Um, we have seen the planning board had it at one point. We had two board, two meetings with the board of appeal, site plan review. I don't even, I don't even really know where it's going to stand at this point because the plans essentially changed. There's, there were really, um, there's a lot of at least to me, and I follow this pretty closely, I have a lot of questions about the procedural matters on how a project like this goes through the towns, um, the, 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 what, how, where we are in the pipeline on a lot of these things. That can be addressed with, uh, with, the, proce with the process that we're using right now. Not only are we going to be doing uh, redrawing the lines once we have consensus on that, but we're also going to be take, looking at the different um, I hope we'll, we will look at the different uh, avenues that we can take to expedite this and give the public some more clarity about, um, about how these projects get approved. And finally, um, I think Jim made a very good point just now about adding uh, you know, some restrictions. I know that uh, the Economic Development Committee two years ago came forward with recommendations about parking in the center business district. We wrote a big memo. We met with... Mike DeLuiso, and we had, at least the three of us, had some consensus on that. Um, I know that that's going to be difficult with the infrastructure project, but I think that those project, those ty that type of policy is one that we should be moving forward on. Parking benefit districts, those types of ideas are things that we wanted to um, incorporate. I think that that might be a little bit out of the scope of what, we, what we're talking about um, on this particular project, but th now is the time to start talking about it. Um, you know, because the what the Board of Appeals does is retrospective. They're looking backwards on things that have already happened. Where right now we're talking about policy moving forward prospectively. That's what this board does, and that's what the things that we should be talking about, like Jim just said. And I, there's a lot of ideas out there. This is the time to bring those forward. Um, but I hear everybody's concerns, and I've been right there with you since the beginning. And um, and I, I, I think what we need to do now is to look, how, look forward to the next project and see how we can do that, um, how we can best make the neighborhood, everyone's comments inclusive and whatnot. But um, that's kind of what I wanted to say. And I'll say more about this once this comes before. I have a, a really long notebook and stuff that I'm going to uh, bring up all these different ideas. But, but for now, those are the things I think we should be talking about. Thank you. Any other councils like to be heard? I know that I share your frustrations and I understand where you're coming from. This whole process has been, I don't want to use the word haphazard, but it's been clumsy from day one. And, you know, coming on board and a new council like this council, the new council has been together about a year and a half. And, you know, we, were, we inherited a lot. And certainly the, you know, the actions that were taken in 2014, a lot of folks feel that they weren't part of the process and I can 
totally understand the frustrations. What I would like to commit to, and I, I think uh, several of the counselors here agree, is to have the appeals board come in, explain the reasons for, for what the decision that they made. But at the same time, I think we should actually analyze each element of this whole process to make sure uh, that we did it correctly. I've always been the type of person that wants to follow the process as it's supposed to materialize when it comes to a project in the community. And usually the projects, uh, the, the process is, is meant to protect the residents and the folks that are bringing the project forward. Uh, whether we follow that 100% is in question. But um, I'm committed to review the whole process and certainly have the appeals board in to get, uh, you know, get an explanation of why they ruled the way they did. I also would like to get the other half of the coin with, with uh, the building department to see why they, he made the decision of the, uh, you know, the commissioner the way he did. So with that, I'll just make one, you can make one more comment unless there's a counselor that would like to speak. Yeah, I'd, Go I'd ahead. I'm not really caught up to what you guys are talking about. Oh, well, <laughs> but, uh, if you were here on time, I you know, wouldn't. You wouldn't <laughs> <if> I was, <laughs> I really try to fly in on time. Yeah, you have but, car uh, trouble? Yeah, I did. But, um, you know, we, the process has always been the same, that they come to the building inspector and they file an idea. Then we passed the bylaw quite some time ago, and, and I was on the council, I know Jim was, and, and uh, Linda, and we passed the site review committee, put out a whole plan for them so that anybody had to come once they met the building inspector, had to go to the site review committee, and we put the people on that committee that we thought would be the sharpest people to help, you know, uh, the citizens. Because in that site review committee, we said that anything that was built had to conform, and you know, it, it, it's still there that it has to conform. Then from there, it went to the planning board. It should go to the planning board, and then maybe to the appeals board. But we also put in the center business district back in '14. And we had numerous hearings about that. Whether people believe we had them or not, there were numerous hearings, both with uh, MAPC and then with the Rules and Ordinance Committee had meetings on it, and then the council had meetings on it, because we had to. We had to follow the open meeting law. We had to have uh, public hearings on each of the, the bylaws that were passed as they were passed. Uh, I don't know what the appeals board is doing now and what the delay is in getting a map to us, but I think Anybody that has an idea if they want to change those bylaws that were passed, both either the site review committee or the Senate Business District, got to come forward and say, this is what we'd like, and then we can change that bylaw. But until that's done, the bylaw that we have in front of us is what they have to follow. And hopefully they're following it. And, uh, you know, I, I agree that no residential houses should be in the Senate Business District. So the line should be drawn around those houses no matter what. But the bylaws that are there are there. They were passed. They were passed after public hearings. They were passed after uh, review by all of the councilors that were here at the time. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm sorry if it's, if it's not working, but it should be working. And I don't know why it's not working. But we need to get something done quickly, whether it's a development, the, the, the shovel in the ground, the, the maps, we need to get something done quickly. Thank you. Anybody else wish to be heard in the council? <coughs> Jack, I'll let you have one quick, you. just a quick one. 30 seconds. Thank you very much. Bill, I think you should resign. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't think you should run again. Uh, there's going to be a big change over in this uh, council, and I think it will be better for the town and for the council, for the uh, chairman, or the president of the council, Mr. Bonacori, not to run again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else who should be right? Tom? I, I just want to say a quick thing about this. <laughs> First of all, we did find, think about changing the things. That's why we submitted a petition last May to have, and we asked for us to have a discussion on amending the zoning law. So we did that, and we didn't get any result. But 
you're the one that did voted not to it. So I should I should be pointing my remarks towards you, but I just want to say we did we did avail ourselves of an open petition, and it didn't work. We didn't get the discussion we wanted. We didn't get the examination we wanted. We didn't get any forums on the planning board. Let me. They were asked three months ago to do something. Okay? I have no criticism of what the planning board did. I just think the planning board should have been asked more than a year earlier than they were to do this. I think we knew it was needed at that time. There should have been some action then. But the planning board received a request. They also received a consultant. The consultant gave them a set of things. And I held them up here in a meeting, and I told you what I thought of them. That's how they started off. They had to work through all of this nonsense, distorted stuff, and so forth. They finally were able to figure it out and sat down here. They've made some preliminary findings. They've asked the assistant town manager to help them in coming back with something. They're a volunteer board. They meet once a month. Okay? They've been, I think they've been pretty diligent in trying to get to where they wanted to go. I just wish they had been asked to do it a year earlier. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Yep. We've elected you officials. You represent the community at large. We entrust that you will take the strong and stronger actions to ensure the fact that this community remains, for the most part, as she was, a small seaside bedroom community that offered a great deal in the way of people skills, in the way of businesses, small businesses, okay? And this idea that all of a sudden, if you change the center business district, and these poor five residents are all thrown in there, all of a sudden you're going to have this flood of influx of businesses and they're all going to come and they're going to live here and they're going to eat here and they're going to work here. This is not Winthrop. And you, each and every one of you, know that. You have a notice of responsibility to us because we put you in office. And we're asking you to take the due diligence. We're asking you to really seriously consider each and every time decisions have to be made so that you lay the, pave, the groundwork now because Winthrop is a very, very hungry, vital community. And you've got other developers that are going to be looking at properties. And if they see, and I don't mean to be unkind, if they see a weak council and they see boards, and I attended many of the planning boards, wherein the planning board chairman made the statement, we're not sure of how to handle this. This is not what you appointed these people for. Yes, they're volunteers, and yes, they're knowledgeable, and yes, they do meet. You people have to form a collaborative. You have to have a, a, a group here and a group there. You have to come together on behalf of the community. Any further comment? Hearing none, correspondence. We've had several. Uh, Allison Casey Dwyer sent us a, an email regarding the ferry. Uh, Mike Demento uh, concerning the Ingleside flooding, and John Battagliano uh, uh, was making comments about the line bike and the parking and the fact that they were blocking uh, the sidewalks. Uh, committee reports, finance. Jim, you want to defer it to? Uh, uh, we could go to new business. Uh, we'll, on old business, we'll take that up. Okay. Town manager's report. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, so to begin, um, there'll be holiday hours this week um, due to the 4th of July off uh, holiday. Um, the offices will close at noon tomorrow and reopen at 8 a.m. on Monday, July 8th. Only non-transactional business will be conducted in the Treasurer Tax Office on Wednesday, July 3rd. Um, that is due to the funeral services of the individual that we um, did a moment of silence for earlier. Um, and as a reminder, e-payments can, electronic payments can be made by visiting the town website. Um, additionally, um, the council president and I had the opportunity to tour uh, Coughlin Park and the new uh, Living Shoreline um, over on Friday. Um, well, um, we met with Coastal Zone Management, the Nature Conservancy, and other individual, and the speaker was there, and some other individuals from the state. Um, they explained to us uh, the uniqueness of the project and how this project has uh, longer standing potential impacts for the town rather than building a physical barrier. Physical barriers break down uh, over 30 years, whereas this is intended to be a shoreline that is there and sustainable for longer than 30 years. Um, I have additional information here, but what's 
coming next is uh, eventually once it's built, uh, it's grown up enough, uh, those uh, fences will be taken down. Um, we are going to be offering signage that both uh, instructs people um, how to potentially interact with some of the plantings there, um, but also what the plantings are doing and how the park was designed because um, this is a newer design. There's coconut. Uh, beams underneath it there's all these different um, stones that are used to dissipate the energy of waves the intention is if a wave comes it does not come up that park and go right around the corner like it did uh, last year in 2018 um, it done with physics involved and things like that way more complicated than I can even explain but um, we hope that this is a project that we can actually show to other communities about uh, how there's a potentially different way than just building physical seawalls um, of interacting with the ocean and protecting the community as well. So that was uh, great to see and it's looking nice already and it's only going to look better as it um, grows up um, more. Um, the fireworks are scheduled to begin at 9.20 p.m. on Thursday. And then concerning the ferry, um, I wanted to give an update on that. And then if you want to um, chime in, Ron, um, I don't have a problem with that. So um, previously, we had a issue with staffing concerning the captains. Um, we had some issues come up. And that's why we dropped service um, uh, over five days, over a two-week period. Um, and then last um, Wednesday, I believe it was, um, we had uh, the engine overheated, in, one of the engines overheated in the boat. Um, we, uh, essentially a cylinder um, melted, it looks like. Um, so now um, we are in the position that um, it's going to be a lengthy uh, repair period. Um, and I am working hard um, concurrently to um, find some type of entity or boat that we can use to um, uphold our commitment to um, our community locally and also the people in Quincy that rely on the ferry. So um, it is not a great situation and we are working hard um, to rectify it. Um, it speaks to some of my uh, personal concerns with a municipality running a ferry and a transportation system on our own. Um, but we are trying our best to try to um, accommodate the constituents that utilize the ferry because that it really is what needs to be done at this point in time. Um, but we are also exploring any and all options concerning the ferry at this point. Yeah, I think um, the town manager is, is, has been working very hard to try to come up with an alternative, but at the same time, the goal was always not to be in the ferry business. We want a ferry, but we don't want to operate it. And for this very reason, we had a personnel problem two weeks ago, now we have a technical problem. And that's the worst thing that can happen when it comes to transportation. Um, Joe I.L. will tell you, it's all about repetition, repetition. The buses always have to be there. Sometimes the people are not there, sometimes the bus is late, but there always has to be repetition. And we just got to a point in the last year and a half where the service was in the black. Um, he's been seeking solutions relative to another company coming in. Now we're actually approaching the MBTA to see if we can go on a pilot program. They just announced a program uh, about a week ago that we're going to apply for. Whether it uh, happens or not, I don't know. My vision has always been for a person with a Charlie car to drive down to the public landing, get on the ferry. And the more traffic that everybody has been in leaving Winthrop, it's getting worse and worse. You drive on Route 16. My wife works up in Burlington. She leaves in the morning at 6 o'clock. I don't see it till 5.30 at night because the traffic is everywhere. It's not just Saratoga Street or Main Street. It's everywhere. Route 16 in Everett, Somerville, 128, 128 on Sunday all day is bumper to bumper. So that's why you look at al alternative transportation. And I firmly believe it as a seashore community that a ferry is needed. And it's been proven. I mean, I've been answering emails from folks that take the, the ferry every day that commute. What are you doing to me? It was wonderful. I just get on the ferry and I go over. Now I get to go in the traffic or take the tea. So we're working on it. All we can do is apologize, but we hope to have something resolved shortly. 
Um, That's I all I say in that. One additional item too. Um, lastly, um, I have my town manager's committee report and recommendations concerning the center business district uh, project, the infrastructure project. Um, I believe that was submitted to you all. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, so you all have copies of it. We will make um, it public on the website as well. Um, it details the finding, the peer review, um, the all-in project, all of the nature of all of these discussions that we had um, concerning some of the um, conditions that were um, brought forth by uh, Councilor Angman when we voted on the financing of the project. Um, all of those are dealt with in this report, um, and we are at the position that we can put this work out to bid um, next week. Uh, it will be on the central register. So um, looking like a uh, construction season starting uh, as early as possible in calendar 20. Um, even if we pushed it right now, we would be looking at uh, most likely late September that we could get in the ground and instead we want to uh, do the right process that I've always been committed to with it in terms of uh, talking with the public, talking about the phasing of it, making sure that everyone knows the potential impacts that are coming with this project as early as possible and then we will continue to reiterate these messages as much as we need to and we will try as much as possible to um, have the public interact with uh, some of like the visioning documents and things like that of how it's going to look in different phases and what people can expect um, because that is something that was also part of the conditions and my office is completely committed to that so it's a quite extensive report that covers um, months of work, but um, the committee did a good job, and um, I appreciate the work that they did. Could you expand upon uh, the future project on Ingleside Park? Every time we have a rainstorm, sure. You know, people talk about yep. when is it going to change? When is it going to change? Absolutely. So. Um, as part of the environmental bond bill that was passed in 2018 at the state, um, Winthrop was potentially allocated approximately $15 million to utilize on um, a series of projects. The initial projects that were talked about then were um, a solution for Ingleside Park, Morton Street, and Pico. Um, right now, um, the first project that we have in front of us um, is the Ingleside project. It's at 30% design right now. It is a combination of um, I believe it's a million gallon storage tank underneath, underneath Ingleside Park um, and a smaller um, pump to move water along as well. Um, it, we have, so we're at the point now that um, I wrote a letter on behalf of uh, my office to uh, the secretary of EEOA concerning the project and um, inquiring how we can start drawing down on the environmental bond bill money so that we can um, continue design work on this project and get through some of the permitting because um, from what I've been told by um, our engineering firm, um, it looks like the permitting for a project like that is at least six months up to a year. So um, we still have a fair amount of work to do on it, but we are at the point that um, we can try to um, start getting some money for it and start thinking um, what the timeline is actually going to be on a project like that. So um, I, I hear people on it. Um, I get uh, constituents' emails about it frequently, um, and I am trying hard to get a solution in place. This is a um, large, uh, multi-million, over $10 million project that we're looking at um, to do the solution, but um, the intent is to alleviate all of the flooding associated with that area and in conjunction with the center business district infrastructure work and the infrastructure work that will be needed under the middle school site um, we will be looking at a completely different system there that can actually deal with the amount of water that's in that area um, even in major 100 year storm type events um, so it, it's, a, it's a series of dominoes like I talked about in the fall concerning the center business district and the center business district being the first domino, but we're at the point that we can start getting some of these other things in motion. And as I have said multiple times to you, my intent is to put out an RFP for the middle school this fall. Um, we are still in the process of doing the title research. Um, I agree with uh, Mr. Dowd concerning the potential issues with Article 97. Um, it seems like from uh, my very layman's understanding of it that we may potentially have an issue with uh, where the hockey rink is located and also the gymnasium. When those were built, um, it 
I'm still trying to research if there was actually a correct land swap that was done um, for Article 97, um, if that was in fact parkland uh, previously, that, that little part of that parcel. So um, that is what is taking long with this process is doing our due diligence with it because I don't want to put it out to bid when people can't actually do anything on the property. Um, and we are also still, um, we did an internal inventory and we're actually bringing in, um, it's called I believe Gov USA, um, they do um, surplus equipment and things like that. They're gonna come in and physically um, inspect all of the assets that we have inside the building as well to get them on surplus lists and get the building cleared out. So um, that whole, like I said, center business district through Angleside, we're trying to attend to all of it um, concurrently to kind of get us moving on some of these things so people don't have to deal with uh, the major issues that are present right now. Questions from the councils? Nick? Um, Council President, thank you. Uh, Town Manager, uh, I'd like to circle back to Coughlin Park. Sure. Um, so with all the activity that's going to be happening down there this week, um, I was assured that that shoreline restoration project would be completed by June 30th. Yeah. And I'm wondering how much longer the temporary fencing is going to be up. So the fencing needs to stay up past the 4th. Um, it is... I did ask him to move it, though. Yeah, yeah, we did ask him to move I it. I asked and then him to move it so that the chairs and all the tables okay. would be available. For you know, for the I like feeling. Yeah. So the and we've gotten a response on that is that in the so those fences have fallen down previously due to wind, and if they fall down, we don't want it to fall onto the living shoreline. We would rather them fall onto the tables. Was actually the response that I got. So um, unless <laughs> I. It is very short notice, but um, we could potentially move the fences a little bit more. But um, I don't want, again, I don't want to ruin stuff that just was years of work in the making. Um, and if you, I actually have all the background information on the project as well, if you want um, some of that. But um, the project is essentially done. Now it just needs to grow a little bit. We need the natural process to take place in terms of the beach grass and uh, the plantings that are kind of one in from the beach grass. It's these bushes. I, I can't say exactly which bushes they are, but um, they need to grow a little bit more. And um, I think they're just a little res reticent to take down the fencing because it is an attractive area and it will be an area that when those fences are down that people are playing in very close proximity to that. Um, and we just don't want to ruin the investment that's already been made in it. Understandable. Coffin Park is such prime real estate on the 4th of July. Any sort of temporary moving you could do to maximize would be appreciated. Understood. And if that's sort of in the short term, in the more medium term, when will the temporary fencing be able to come down? That's a good question. I can inquire on that and get back to you on that. I don't, Thank you. I don't know off the top of my head. Thank you. I see. Go ahead. Just a quick thing. Uh, as Coffin Park, everybody gets there after the parade, and they usually have the national anthem and so on. A couple of years there was no flag up there. Would you just make sure someone puts the flag up that morning? Okay. I think there was a flag there. I think there was. Three quick things. Um, on the back to the ferry a little bit, I'm, I'm sure that you've been in contract with our contractual obligations. We're okay with that. No issues. Payments will be okay or adjusted. Or how is to, that working? To my knowledge, yeah. Um, we are, they are trying to be as accommodating as possible, both MassDOT and Quincy, on um, what we are signed up to uh, provide in terms of service. Okay. And can, I also would like to ask, for, for years we've had department heads here, public safety, uh, DPW, fire and police, and, and I have found it a, a extremely beneficial to us and to the public, um, and I would like to ask that that return. Um, so that's my second point. And my third is, historically, we've had the town manager call Massport the week before, the week of the fourth, just to, fear, just to make them cognizant of our firework display and if there's any changes that they had to make in terms of flight paths or whatever. Yep. But if, we, if you can do that, that would we be We have been in contact. We've been in contact with the Coast Guard. Um, the company that is actually providing the fireworks pulled all the permits as well. Um, so um, we have been hard at work to make sure everyone knows that we're shooting fireworks off at 9.20 p.m and hopefully the weather cooperates as well. Thank you. Just, uh, I think it was Saturday, we had all that torrential downpours and, and the flooding, and um, it, it behooves me to say that each area that's flooding is ongoing. Uh, in front of the Elks, it's been going on. 
Ingleside Park now, it's been going on. Sturgis Street, it's been going on. Bottom of Water Tower Hill, it's been going on. It's getting worse. We're not getting any progress. We're not getting any results. Uh, I mean, it's, um, you know, uh, it's almost three years that these issues have been going on and we don't see any improvement. And I, I, I hope there's some kind of a plan that can have some temporary alleviation of some of this you know uh, so there is no bonding. temporary oh, and by the high school there is no you couldn't get by alleviation it's doing the infrastructure work that's what's necessary so all those areas were done they I okay um, in terms of Ingleside well not Ingleside and that everything part. that's necessary around here we're talking tens of millions of dollars and we also have a hundred year old infrastructure which we've discussed on multiple occasions that um, we need to work hard to work all around town we're making um, basically decisions on a case-by-case -case basis of what to do with our limited resources so um, this project uh, for Ingleside is over 10 million dollars center business district is about 14 million dollars um, we're investing a fair amount of money in terms of taking we care just of the, did the high school and you know that whole area down there was underwater I we this town is in a very unique location as well and we are doing our best the ocean is not going anywhere and we are trying our best to do this this is something that is not unique to Winthrop there's flooding up and down the coast because of the failing infrastructure that's in place in most communities. Um, I dealt with multiple feet of flooding when I was in Somerville with a microburst It actually ruined our police station um, I mean, this is something that's happening with every community, and uh, from my mind, it's because many communities did not um, really ready themselves for the impacts of climate change, and this is happening to us now, and it's only going to continue happening. So we need to be spending as much money as possible to alleviate this. The, the, uh, another question, and, and I'm not around the town as much as I used to be during the day. Uh, are they cleaning catch basins? Is there an ongoing program uh, of, of, you know, they, we used to see them all the time. I mean, I they absolutely are cleaning catch basins and concentrating on those low-lying areas that you know. absolutely. And there, I mean, the, our DPW department is, in my mind, doing a commendable job with the limited resources that they have. Could we get a schedule of maybe for one of our meetings and when certain areas have been done? Sure, I can inquire about that. Thank you. Who knows? Thank you, Mr. Manor. There's no school department update because there was no meeting. On road business, uh, we do have a vacancy on the council that was made available by the resignation of uh, Councilor Mike Lucerto. Uh, we've had it out there publicly for the last two and a half weeks. At the last meeting, we announced that we would take it up at this session. Um, right now, we've only received one individual that is inquired about being appointed. So I'll open it up to the discussion with the council. With the president, yes. I, I would take this opportunity to place in nomination in the name of Robert DeMarco for the office of Winter Town Council at large. Uh, Mr. DeMarco is a bright young man. He's here in the audience. He ran for this office. Uh, he got over 43% of the votes. Uh, there were 17 to 2,000 people that voted for him to get that position. And I think it's only right that he is given that position by us counselors. A second. Good second it. Any discussion on the nomination? Are there any other nominations before we close? I have to say it three times, I think. Have to say it three times? <laughs> okay. Do I hear any other nominations? That's two. Do I hear any other nominations? Hearing none. Motion to close nominations. A motion has been made second. to close nominations. Been seconded. Okay. All in favor? You want to take a roll call? Okay. Please call the roll. Council Langman? Yes. Council Callum? Yes. Council Christopher? Yes. Council Boncori? Rob DeMarco. Council Carino? Yes. Council McConkey? Yes, Rob DeMarco. Vice President Letary? Rob DeMarco. President Vecchio? Rob DeMarco. Congratulations, Rob DeMarco. Congratulations, Rob. Hey. Make sure you go to the clerk's office. You're going to regret it. Would you like to say something, Rob? <laughs>
I just thank you very much for your support. And uh, am I allowed to come up and shake hands? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you want. <laughs> Make sure you go to the uh, clerk's office tomorrow. So get sworn in. Get sworn in so we'll be with us in August. I'm already yeah. breaking stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's only Phil. You're already getting me to present. That's one thing. You know how to break. There you go. I think you can put that together. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked you to resign. He's resigning anyway. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, in the old business, I'll refer to our chair of finance. The uh, Finance Committee met earlier this evening. There were two items on the agenda which were both put forward with positive recommendation. I'll make the first motion that the Town Council vote to transfer $16,900 from salary reserve to department budget and enterprise funds as needed. Any discussion? That? No, wait, wait a second. Uh, no, that's the wrong motion. That's the new motion. Yeah, I know, but there's a, that's a different motion. Do you have the motion, Anna? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the 69 yeah, for the, the salary because it's a different motion on the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Transfer sixteen thousand nine hundred dollars from salary reserve to department budgets and enterprise funds as needed to cover the costs associated with the recently settled union agreement or take any other action relative there too. Um, this motion is um, coming with positive recommendation, does not require a second. And this is to, there's a clerical union that has um, settled contracts for fiscal uh, 2019. My understanding is fisc uh, today they're out of contract again, but this is going back from fiscal 19. This is coming out of the salary reserve line, which we had. Um, there is adequate money in there, and uh, any discussion on the motion? Council second. President, yes. Uh, I'm wondering what is the percentage this increase? It's a 1.5% increase. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you, guys. We expect that out of the next. Yes, <laughs> consistently. <laughs> any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call. We don't, don't have to. We don't need a roll call at 16,000. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Number two. Number two. Move that the town council vote to transfer $10,000 from highway personnel line to cemetery personnel line in preparation for June 30th, 2019 closing or take any other action relative there too. This also came out of finance with a positive recommendation. This is more of a end of the year moving thing. This was an item that it, when we were doing the fiscal 2019 budget, somehow this line was shorter than this line was added. So it's just moving. Uh, from the personnel line from the highway to the cemetery. Any discussion on the motion? Here we none. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Under new business, um, fiscal year end 2019 transfers. Council yeah. President, have yes, I have a. Um, my head. So I have a motion that the town council vote to modify the following general fund balances to facilitate the June 30th, 2019 closing of the fiscal 2019 year or take any other actions relative there too. Um, and there are several items that we are taking money from to fund several items that are uh, short. And the items that we're, uh, the funding sources would be the town council reserve, $27,800. Legal services from the town manager's office of $10,000. Legal services from the town attorney line from $10,000. DPW building maintenance personnel, $20,000. Payments to veterans, $15,000. Waste removal contracts, $21,798. Um, and the budget destinations would be the town council stipend of $9,000. Town council internal audit of $36,000. Administration and Finance Audit, 18500 Snow and Ice Manpower, 29850 Charter Schools Sending Tuition, 1000 Fiscal 14 Derelict Property, 7752 Fiscal 19 Council on Aging Van Town Match, $95. And Fiscal 17 Pest Control, $2,400. Uh, the total is $104,598. Um, I do have a different, and, and I think this motion is 
I think the $15,000 instead of coming from payments from veterans should be coming from the GIC. So I just want to make that change. Um, the total is 104598 I would like to ask for emergency action on this where we would like to close the books by the middle of July and um, we are not meeting until August. Um, so I would ask for an emergency motion on this. I would make that motion. It's a motion's been made to move it. Any discussion on the motion? Is there two things? Is yes. there any issues that are about public safety? Um, are there any? Uh, no. No. Well, the emergency, set, I mean, we could have a special meeting. Um, last year, our meeting in July was the 17th, I believe, and we voted on it then. Um, but this year, the meeting is today, and the next meeting is until August 13th. I would argue that in the aggregate, if we had a, um, a f you know, we weren't able to balance the books, that that could potentially have a, um, an issue down the line with public safety. I think if you look to precedent, we've made these emergency motions previously, and I, I would think that this would be in line with that. Okay, a motion has been made to move this question now. Any further discussion on the motion? Uh, let's get a roll call. Okay. Okay. Councilor Ingman? Yes. Councilor Calla? Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Boncori? No. <laughs> Councilor Farino? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Vecchio? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Emergency motion. Um, I don't know. This is an emergency request, though. No, you can refer to it. Yeah. So also on the new business, there is a motion to, that the council vote to transfer 35000 from salary reserve to police department budget to cover costs associated with the recent union agreement or take any other action relative there, too. Is that what Yes. The That's the fire department. The fire okay, because it says police. It say Again, unless this is a... Wrong motion. I'm just having... <laughs> So I believe this was just a it miscommunication. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a typo. Correct, it's yeah. the correct line. I apologize. That's a typo. It's the correct line. At the title is fire union base, and the account number in the body is the account number for so the fire department. So just the wording, the verbiage. Is it wrong. was just yes. yeah. It's the similar motion that um, was previously approved for right. the police department. So that's a, apologies. That's a typo. That's okay. an error on that. We're going to make that motion, and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to ask that that be referred to finance. Motion to make to refer to finance. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Yeah, I said that. Thank now, you. can I ask Can I ask the town manager, does this mess you guys up? It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mess us up. Um, we just for due diligence, well, not due diligence, um, for the accommodation of the union for coming to the table and making an agreement. Um, although this was late in the fiscal year, they still did come and come to an agreement with us. Um, I know our good firefighters are in <laughs> eagerly anticipating their retro checks that they would receive well, for this. Uh, you know, this is public safety, and I'd like to rescind, uh, take a vote to rescind that. A motion. motion has been made to rescind the last motion. Do we hear a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The no. have it. Oh, there's a no. One, no. We one, have no, one, one no. no. And I would like to make a motion under an emergency act to um, transfer $35,000. From from salary reserve to the fire department budget to cover costs associated with recent union agreement or take any other action relative there too. Second again, this on is the fiscal motion. nineteen. That's so correct. Second on the motion. Second. That's second. And this is also a one and a half yep. percent increase. That's Thank correct. You. Any discussion on the motion? This is for public safety. This is for public safety. And I would ask for a roll call. Walking, walking out and having the strike. Correct. So <laughs> Okay. okay. Any further discussion on the motion? Here we none. Let's take a roll call. Councilor Ringman? Yes. Councilor Calla? Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Boncori? Yes. Councilor Perino? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Vecchio? Yes. 
Oh, quite nice. Yes. I'd like to make Class a motion. President? Yes. I'd like to make a, a motion that the council accept the reappointment of Thomas Shipley. Second. 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 Constable for the town of Winthrop, made by town council okay. president. I'll take any other action there, too. Is there a second? Second. Second by Constable Boncori. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The aye seven. That the town council accept the appointment of Linda Cargill as the committee member on the airport hazards committee for the town of Winthrop, made by town council president Vecchia. I'll take any other action there, too. Second. Second. Second has been made. Any discussion on the motion on the appointment? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, none. The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, discussion. Um, the first discussion under new business item 7A is non binding referendum questions for the November ballot. Councillor, uh, this is no. uh, the no, no, no. Um, so I've been, you know, we have a, a lot going on in the town, um, and I thought with an election coming up now, I thought it would be a good idea, it's something we really haven't done in the past, and I think it's important that we get town sentiment on a lot of things. So I was looking at Mass General Laws, Chapter 53, Article, Section 18A, and it discusses non-binding public opinion advisory question on local ballots. Um, now we have up until 35 days to have final language into the town clerk, but I think it would be very advantageous of us to discuss certain things, whether it be, uh, Dottie had discussed earlier about the town versus kind of city mentality, even though technically we are a city by the chart, but looking at that small town mentality and, um, you know, there, there, there are talks of putting upwards of a thousand units in this town. And I think that that's something that I would like to get the public sentiment on. Um, I think the middle school side is something that I'd like to get the public sentiment on. The tennis courts, so we could finally either clean that area up and build out a good tennis courts or do as we had voted two years ago and, and make it parking. Whatever it is, I'd like to get a, a concrete answer from the town so we don't have a lot of this bickering. We're never gonna agree on 100% on a lot of things, but I think it's very important to try to get as much public opinion and usable public opinion as we can. Um, so I, I don't think this is something, obviously it's a new new business, it's not gonna be voted on or anything tonight, but I think it's something that I'd like to have on the discussion for the next meeting and we can refer it out to a couple committees. Um, time is not on our side in a lot of this, but we have 35 days, so basically we would have to have this in by the end of, uh, you know, the end of September, by our second meeting in September to vote on. That gives us one, two, three, three meetings. So um, if that's possible, I just think it's very important to try to get the public involved in a lot of these major decisions that we're going to be making. Okay. Any comments from yeah. Just I have a comment on yes. our questions. Because we uh, had a question that came about banning marijuana. So it came to rules and ordinance and we wrote the question. I, I guess it was sent to the complement page and we're still waiting or we didn't have that response. But on any ballot question, when you put the question on the ballot, you have to put a pro and a con. Mm -hmm. And usually that's done by committees that are formed in the town. Like there's usually a committee that, that identifies itself and it, it incorporates or, or files a something with the town clerk saying this is the committee that's for marijuana and this is the committee that's against it. And they usually write the pro and the con that goes with the question that we write as a council. And that would be the same, I think, on any of those other questions that you'd have to have some pro or con written to go along with each of the questions. And we still don't have it for the marijuana question. I and think those are more so binding. I'm, I'm not sure the way I read it, but <laughs> what I'd like to do, I guess, if, if possible. I think he's looking at, you're looking for visionary things. Well, non-binding, and yeah, there's a specific section. I'd like to ask, maybe if we could have the town manager ask the town clerk to research it a little bit for us. But it's specifically in Chapter 53, Article uh, Section 18A. It doesn't talk about pro versus con. It's just a non-binding public opinion or advisory questions, um, just to try to get the sentiment and the, and the pulse of the public. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if it's too late. But I'd like to look into it because I'd like to see it done. So, okay. any further discussion? Uh, yeah, I think the town manager has an answer for us. I think it's a it great idea to get input from the town and in the pulse of the community when we're voting on issues. Another thing that's been suggested to me by numerous people is that we have a quarterly water bill, and if there's an issue that's coming up and we know it's going to become 
uh, on the table at some point. We could put a survey in to our water bill every quarter and put that down and people can react in that way one way or another when they send their payment so, in. So um, I neglected to talk about another item in my town manager's report. So Denise and I actually spoke with a company last week concerning um, agenda management and our management of our minutes and things like that and in addition they have um, a communications tool because um, I have heard uh, the constituency concerning um, our outward facing public uh, communications so um, we are looking to centralize our communications and speak up, sure we're looking to centralize our communications through one platform so everything comes out the same way from our town instead of um, having each department send out their own individual things and not losing oversight with it with that we've also been engaging on how do we exactly this gauge public opinion on things and how do we get input so uh, the assistant town manager has actually been engaging with a company um, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now um, but they provide us with uh, essentially scientific results of any survey that we do um, and there's multiple ways we can put out the survey through this company um, and it comes at a small cost to the town, but we would be able to survey the town uh, multiple times per year on different topics, um, and we can get down to very granular, granular levels of data with it. So um, it is something that if you want to put something on the ballot, um, and um, that is a process to pursue, because um, it deals with coordinating with the state and things like that and getting it on the printed ballots, um, or um, I am consistently looking for solutions that um, can alleviate um, some of the pressures on us and how we interact with the public because um, just in the conversation tonight, um, many times it comes up that people feel like they have not been able to engage in the process correctly and I want to, um, I've said this previously, I'm committed to providing a higher level of transparency in this town and whatever resources um, we can put towards that I think will benefit the town so um, we can work towards building consensus on things and um, work towards allowing people to advocate um, for their interests not just within your meetings but also through um, different forms of communication as well. Um, so it's something that I can inquire with with the clerk um, concerning getting something on the ballot, but we are also looking for other solutions as well um, to alleviate these concerns. Okay, any further discussion on this particular subject? Uh, well, Council President, getting back to the discussion here, I'm a little confused. What is the motion on the table? What, what are we considering It's not a here? motion. It's just a discussion to see if the possibility, I mean, you know, the town clerk, I guess technically as our employee, I could reach out to her and ask her to do some more research on this. Um, but I, just to get the pulse of it, is it worth seeing if it's feasible in, in a relatively short period of time to get some public opinion questions out there on things that, you know, we could, it, it, I'm not stating these are the things we have to ask about, I'm just saying that we could discuss them and come up with a couple of questions, if it's five or six questions that we could put on a ballot that's non-binding, just to get the pulse of the community. Okay, we'll have that on our next agenda. The marijuana ballot question. Where does that all stand? Well, we had rules and ordinance. We sent the rules and ordinance. KP, uh, and KP responded? Yeah, have they? Um, I believe that they have responded, but I will inquire with them after this meeting and um, figure out what their opinion is concerning now, the how does, that came out. How does Phil's scenario work? With the needs to point. Yeah. Because uh, usually there are committees that form mm -hmm. for a question that's a major question like this, and they write the pro and the con. The town doesn't do that. Yeah, for them so because the, we, the town would not be writing and pro and con in this. Um, I think this is an opportunity because of timing that we could, I would open it up to the public submitting um, information either pro or con. Um, I have been in public meetings where people have expressed these opinions pretty yes. eloquently, and I think that... Um, I will suspend hey, the Dor rules. Dor Dor right there. I'll suspend um, the rules, the Dottie, would you I like mean? to... I'll suspend the rules right now. Would you like to speak regarding this? Because I believe you had a lot of questions relative to the question, ballot question. I want to. I want to. Okay, I'm going to address... First of all, I'd like to address the town manager, if I may, through the chair. I've listened to the studies in the Charette study, the study, and we're up to five. We're going to go out and outsource and pay for it. 
We have tax bills, water bills. We have mass mailings that go around our community. Is there no reason why you can't put a public opinion survey in those mailings without going through the expense of quote unquote an outside company that has to give a summary and a report? I mean, we have very capable people that can read these, you know, when they get back in the town and make a very clear assessment. Wouldn't that be a good starting point rather than continue to spend small amounts of money here, represent larger monies out there? And I've heard five presentations tonight about we'll hire this, we're going to get that, we're going to go over here, we're going to go over there. I don't know whether or not that's feasible if you're looking for an opinion poll. I think it would be very, it would behoove the saving if you would take and utilize the mass mailings that we already do. Especially now, too, we're working on the census. We have a cleaner bill of health as to who is residing in Winthrop. So my only concern with mass mailings is I've dealt with this previously. When you have lenders, you're not engaging with them. So we're losing out on their opinion. Um, also, within my office, um, I'm not sure who I would task with being involved, uh, being in charge of a survey. What about some of these high school students that want to go on and, and, and engage them and let them get involved in government process? And as far as the renters go, you can publicly put in and make it known and advantageous to them if they would like to participate as a renter. There's very, very easy ways to drop off leaflets, like you could drop it to us at Fort Heath, Sail Harbor, any of the apartment buildings. You can drop off notices and let them know that if they choose, they can so be a part of this survey in the town. There is no reason why we have to engage companies all the time. We have resources right here in town. I, I don't disagree with you. Um, I'm just looking for a level of professionalism that I am not positive we could provide within the town um, for the results. Well, let's of keep this to the marijuana question. All right, like I'd, li I'd like to address the marijuana subject if I may. Thank you. Okay, we're talking the marijuana, marijuana retail store. I'm going to start off with it currently stands with the state tax exercise tax is coming in at 10.75 percent. The state standard sales tax is coming in at 6.25. The combination right now of the state combined taxation is presently 17%. The Massachusetts Cannibal Control Commission has indicated that this state tax will soon be increased based on the reported sales return giving the profile of fiscal 219 to 220. The town of Winthrop had two options, to outright ban the establishment of a recreational marijuana store or to move the December 2018 town council moratorium to a ballot question come November 2019. The wording of the citizen petition that was submitted was seeking to ban outright. The wording was very clear, very precise. Am I bothering you, Mr. Boncori? No, not at all. Oh, okay. What, what I the wording was very clear and precise, as with other communities. Over 50 communities have elected to ban an established outright either with the 2016 state ballot question or within their own governing powers. There is one argument that we hear that a marijuana retail shop will and her additional revenue brings to the town is the saving grace for the town's <coughs> budgetary shortfalls. We disagree. The state allowed a maximum taxation for cities and towns. It's called the local option tax. The city or town cannot exceed the local option taxation of a maximum of 3%. Excuse me. Oh, I don't want to turn. Okay. I apologize. From the local tax revenue, the monies the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission requires under their statutes 
that the community set aside funds to establish a safety medical usage fund program. We know the hours of operation would require a police detail in the salary range of 60,000 plus. We believe the medical and usage program required would and could involve an additional salaried employee. I ask you, a revenue return for winter is where? Is it worth the additional impact on our community? When all around us other communities have establishments underway for those who choose to partake. It's a proven fact that marijuana has its most serious damage while the brain is still developing from the ages of 1 through 25. Of most concern is that once the damage is done, it remains permanent. The medical profession attests also to seeking greater problems they find in the 30 to 40 year old range with pot smoking history, they have greater problems in cognitive challenges. I would ask you, is it worth the risk? We are seeking the wording on the November ballot that clearly and directly states a choice, either no or yes, and not to exacerbate as was displayed at the Rules and Ordinance Committee meeting and their draft choice of distraction and needless lengthy wording that was not found in many other communities. I would hope that both the Councilor Laconte and Boncori would recuse themselves in a final decision around wording on the ballot. I also have included when I pass this out to you the Cannabis Control Commission. I've been in touch with them. I gave you the phone number and the Massachusetts City or Town Government Resource Center, which helps communities, is the phone number and the fax number is on your, your documentation. We gave you a very brief wording on that petition. It was very clear. Our town manager worked very closely with us on that. We would ask you to take a look at that. We don't want that question to be thrown up against the board or the wall, so when it comes down, it's so confusing, people will go in and the, and the positioning is very important too. The moratorium was for no. The petition was for ban. So let's put that first and foremost, that we say no. Yes. Thank you. Anybody wish to uh, yes. 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 As we pass the motion here, Pardon me? we only have one option. The only option is to ban it or not ban it. And that's the valid question, is to ban it or ban it. The question is, I know you're for banning it, so... Yeah, no, no, I know no. I'm not going to engage you in an argument. I would ask you to take that telephone number and call that number for cities Sorry. and towns. They'll advise you as working with Marum Healy. They'll advise you as to how you can properly word that, as many other communities have. Okay, it's not an argument. And I wasn't looking for an argument, and I don't want an argument. What I want to know is, if you and the people that you are with that are for the ban can get together and write the we pro did question. It, we submitted it to you. No, but there's got to be a, the pro reasoning for passing it. We and then hopefully, I don't know if there's people. Meeting. We submitted that to you at your committee meeting. And, and it was just a very, very, very discouraging, rude manner in which I walked out of that meeting because of the fact there was no. No community cooperation going on whatsoever, okay? I and another person walked out on my committee because your responsibility as rules and ordinance is to turn around and research and be able to come up with as close a finding that is conducive to the question and to the public and the community at large. Not interpretation, not this lengthy so it gets camouflaged. It's right out there, yes or no. The question was not lengthy, and it was research. <clears throat> what we need is a pro argument and a con argument. And I want to know the, who's going to I'm sorry, them. Council President, is there a motion on the table right now? What, what are we debating? What, what's going on here? Let's just say, this is just a discussion. There's no... It's a discussion. We it's still have to get I'll call on you in a second. Who's qualified to write the pro right. and the con. And you can write the pro. But I think you have to register with the clerk to be able to do that. Or someone on your committee. You don't have to register that. Got it. The, the question is gone for review by legal. What the counselor is telling you. The question has been in review by legal since July okay. of last year. 
Go home and pay. Just have that question. Okay. He's telling you what else has to go on the ballot question, the pros and the cons. If you have a committee that has something to say about it, then I would draft it and submit we it to you. That. We don't know who's in favor of it. If there's a committee that's in favor of it, have they stepped forward? Have they drafted anything? Have they made a recommendation? No, they I don't know. Ask All I know Council, is that we've a, taken a quick, proper action. Just a quick question. When you say pro and con, do you just mean a yes vote would do this? Yes, and a no vote would do this. Okay, so a yes vote would would ban but, the establishment of a marijuana no, facility. No, 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 those are essentially no. opinion pieces when it's put onto the ballot itself. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's basically, here's what the question is, here's an argument in favor of it, and oh, here's an argument, argument against, against it, it. Yeah. essentially. The question only yeah. says that, it, yes or no, what it means. It's the pro and con so that you have to put with it. It can be cited Council to the committee, it can be cited Council to the committee. Council well, uh, I don't really know what to say here because um, I don't really know what we're talking about. Um, so I'll just kind of wait for a motion to be on the table and we can discuss it. There's no motion, uh, Councillor. We're having a discussion on it, uh, an update. Uh, hopefully at the next meeting, can we have the, the question Absolutely. available at the next council meeting? When Any I respectively to the chair, would I ask if I could have a copy of that? It'll be public uh, knowledge. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to the next item. Uh, the location or relocating the parks and rec building, or office, I should say, in facility. Uh, that was requested by one of our residents. Um, we can discuss it. I think it's going to have to go to capital assets and finance, but I'll uh, get some guidance from the council. Jim, I, 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 would, sure? I, I would make that motion, and I, uh, I'm glad we're taking this up. And I think it's, you know, not the locate to me. It's not, and I and I believe when Karen Jobs was asking this question, it's not just the location of the office; it's the location of the facility itself where, where are they going to run their activities they need a permanent home um, it's it's much a disservice to the to the parents who are you know they they go into the back door of, a, of an old older building that doesn't have the services it really should have and and Sean's doing yeoman's work with with not great equipment uh, you know you have to have the proper tools in the bag to, to perform the functions you just don't need you know the ability to do it, you need the tools to help you do it, and I don't think we've been uh, doing Cox and Rec a good service over the last couple of years. Uh, so I think it's very important that I would make a motion to, to move it to capital assets and finance because it also it obviously involves a, an asset and it obviously involves money to do it. But uh, we're here second on the motion. motion. Second on the motion. I'll second this. Second by Councilor. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Public comment. <coughs> yes, Donna. Uh, very briefly, again, Donna Riley, uh, Precinct 5. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Councillor um, Materi for clarifying uh, the fact that uh, on January 15 of this year, uh, three members accused themselves. It wasn't just uh, Councillor Von Kippur who voted no. Uh, and I appreciate that clarification. The other thing I thought of is, um, just as a resource, uh, WCAT on, uh, was at the um, appeals board meeting on June 27, 19, and uh, Kurt was the video uh, person at that time. So I don't know, I mean, if you want to look into the real detail about how the they transpired place. and what was used as evidence to turn the property into partial uh, residential and partial business um, CAT does that information on the Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Dad. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I was at a planning board meeting, I believe it was the last planning board meeting, and uh, there was some discussion uh, between members of the audience and and members of the town council that um, that different committees or um, boards were not supposed to comment at um, a board of appeals or a planning board meeting, and yet um, Mr. Bonacori commented that in his opinion, all the uh, one and two family homes at the planning board meeting, he commented that all the one and two family homes were in a residential district. 
and, and yet now we're not supposed to comment, or you are not supposed to comment. I think confusion uh, benefits the developers. There's been a lot of confusion uh, going back and forth about uh, ordinances, a lot of confusion about where the lines are drawn. And with this confusion, um, we, still have, we still haven't got an opinion from the planning board. They're, they're, the planning board asked um, the assistant manager, um, uh, the, the woman from Copeland and Page, and, and the man that drew, uh, drew the map that uh, has all the fuzzy lines. The planning board asked for those three individuals to come up with a plan to present to the planning board to, so they can make a recommendation to you. How more confusing can a situation get? Um, somebody can comment, somebody cannot comment. You know, I'd like some clarification on that. Uh, can somebody just decide to comment and, and go against uh, what, what was just discussed here? Uh, I think the confusion benefited the developer. I, I hope you take that into consideration. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Mr. Riley. One. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I comment on a different topic. I understand Jim's theory of what Jim's thought about the ballot questions and so forth, but I think he, we really understand that we, we developed a form of government that said we're going to go from a 270 person legislative body to a nine legislative body. When we were doing that, I was on the Charter Commission at the time with Council Lutieri, Council Bancori, and Six other fine citizens. We uh, we had a consultant, and they but they would they would throw an awful lot of literature on various forms of government theories of how local government should work. And one of the things was that you if you have a smaller group, they're going to be more engaged. They're going to look into matters in depth. They're going to spend time. They're going to deliberate, and they, you're going to use your committee systems to do it. And I think that's that's working. I don't think that you want to, that you necessarily should be, I think if you go to a, these kinds of questions, you should do it in a limited kind of fashion. Uh, uh, <clears throat> there was a notice of the, through the years thing, I, every once in a while I get reminded how old I am because I see my name back in, in various periods of time. Uh, so, uh, so 40 years ago, we had a question about, thought, about a licensing in carnival for the American Legion. And the American Legion members came in and said they needed the carnival. They had done it in the past. It was a major fundraiser for them, which creates some financial hardships. Then we heard from the neighbors. I don't think Jim was living on Brookfield Road there, but a lot of the people who were still living there, who I well, you most, been there. You would have been most of whom I knew, and some of them were very close friends of my parents, they talked about what it was like living next to the carnival, all of those members of his, and the, the uproar that was there. I won't go into the details, but the carnival and the carnival workers were not people you want to have camped out across the street from you for five nights. <laughs> um, so we decided to we decided to vote with the member, with the residents. The, the board of selectmen changed. There were two new members, Bob DeLeo being one, but another person came in, and then another member of the board of selectmen two years later at the town meeting said he wanted a public referendum on the question of carnival licenses, because it was a difficult and emotional decision. And I get up and I was, I said, you know, I was on the board of selectmen for six years. We made difficult decisions on a weekly basis. I said, I don't think you need to come back and say, here's a decision we're having a hard time with. We're going to punt and throw it on a ballot question. That's not the way we should work. So I. I I understand what you're trying to do, and I appreciate his effort to talk, but I would do it in a very limited fashion and understand that we've elected you for a purpose to, to, to evaluate things and do it for us. Um, and I, I don't think that, that you can push aside any of the issues that you're thinking about and put it on a, on a ballot question or a survey or stuff things in water bills or whatever fashion somebody does to come up with some kind of a survey. That's not the way we set up the system, and I think we're going to continue the way we set it up. Thanks. Thank Anyone else is to be heard? Yeah, Bill Schmidt, Precinct 5. I just want to echo what Tom has said, because, you know, a few years ago, you look at ballot questions, people don't want to increase the, tech, the gas tax, but they want to 
fix the roads. And so I think oftentimes ballot questions are too simplistic. And there are complicated issues here, how you're trying to solve things. I think that's, as Thomas said, we have faith in you having the time to study the issues in detail. So I, I just want to caution you on that. Anyone else wish to be here? Yes. I'd just like to, first of all, congratulate Rob DeMichael as a new council member. Uh, I want you to really read that oath that you take as a counselor several times and underline keywords in there. And remember one other thing. You are going to be coming to meetings, and a lot of us are not going to be here. But you have a fiduciary responsibility to represent us in the best form we can and take everything you hear from the public and your constituents and bring it to the table for us. Second of all, I'd like to congratulate the council for the certificate you gave a couple of weeks ago to the Parks and Recs Department, uh, the basketball uh, boys and girls teams. I just want to make a comment on Sean Driscoll. He's done a fantastic job at Parks and Recs. That gymnasium is a valuable, valuable asset to our town. Without that gymnasium, we would have kids out in the streets. Um, I go to other communities, Danvers, I go up to the sportsplex there. They have six basketball courts in one area, and the town is probably 23 from what I was told. Six at uh, Danvers High School. So we are really, in a lot of ways, as far as recreational, uh, facilities goals, we're, we're really behind the eight ball on that. So I want to just compliment, Sean does a great job. He's there morning, noon, and night. He's completely dedicated to the youth of Winthrop. And uh, I hope the uh, council backs him in any way possible. The next thing I just want to say as a resident is, you know, obviously we're going to have development. And I just want to make sure that when the infrastructure starts next year, or whenever it starts, that every safety precaution that can be possibly taken, be taken. We saw what happened up in Andover and the disaster with the gas lines. I have some very serious concerns with the center area and uh, the entire center, going from Pauline Street to Somerset to Cottage Park Road to Bartlett Road to Woodside after Putnam to every single area there. We really have to be vigilant about safety. And that's what I'm getting back from all my neighbors, because my neighbors talk to me as you all know. And the concern level has to be at the highest level. I hope, uh, as Councilor Terry spoke earlier, about safety or commissioner safety or whatnot, not, that every single day, or the precautions that have to take place, take place. This is very, very, very important, because if something goes wrong down there, it will be a catastrophe. We are building in a very congested small area. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Yes, Karen. Uh, Karen Shabbos, Precinct 2. Um, I don't think anybody at the table needs to know what I think about the ferry. I'm sure they do know, but I know that the town manager knows too, because I've expressed my concerns. Loud and clear. Um, <laughs> I hope now that you will sit back and I, I believe that the town manager is trying very hard to get us out of the ferry business. I'm not going to dis dispute the need for the ferry or the people that use the ferry, but I'm just disputing the fact that Winthrop should not be in the ferry business. We don't know how to do it. None of us do. And that includes any of you at the table, I'm sure. And I don't care how much boating experience you may have. You have a motor that's down now. That there isn't even a part available in the United States. That, that's unbelievable. It has to come from overseas. I don't understand that. It's too bad General Ship wasn't still in East Boston, because they would probably fix that ferry tomorrow. And again, I'm dating myself. Um, the other thing is, uh, I certainly hope that when the question goes on the ballot in November for marijuana, it is not as confusing as this discussion has been tonight. There's either a yes or a no. A pro or a con. Yes, you want something in Winter Center that sells marijuana, or you don't want something in Winter Center. That's the pro, that's the con. There's no in between. There's no deepest. If we don't have it in Winter, we're not going to get that. What is it, 3%? Is that what you said, Joy? Whatever. You're going to get maximum is 3%. But what are you going to get for traffic? The town manager now tells you what the traffic is coming into Winter, going out of Winter, as he's coming into Winter. It's going to be the same coming into Winter. 
for these people to be buying the marijuana. And I don't just, just, you know, anybody who wants to buy it, fine. I just don't want it in my backyard. Anyone else wish to be heard? Jim? Just a couple of things. First, I just want to. I remember the carnival 43 years ago. I went as a 15 year old kid. I had a blast, but now as a property owner next door, I probably wouldn't want it. You weren't having one drinking with a We did not, I, I know we discussed, but we did not, and I don't know if we need a vote, but we had mentioned uh, the possibility of asking the Board of Appeals and Building Commission to come here at the next meeting. I don't know if that's something. Do you want to take a vote on it, or do you just want me to pursue it? I would like you just to pursue it. Okay. And I just want to wish everybody for the next, uh, uh, happy and healthy fourth. And it's uh, it's one of the best times, if not the best time in winter. So enjoy it. And before I close Amazing. it out, anybody else like to? Where is the response? No. Nope. No. Nope. A couple of announcements. The Horribles Parade, we know, is at 9 o'clock on 4th of July. Uh, Point Shirley will be closed at 6 o'clock on July 4th evening. Uh, the fireworks, I think you mentioned they go off what time they go off. On July 9th, um, at 6 o'clock, the Public Works Dog Park discussion at the Harvey Actually, Hearing Council Room. President, I'm sorry to interrupt, but because of a lack of quorum, we'll need to postpone that meeting. I'll get back with a reschedule as soon as possible. Okay, Nick. Thank you very much. Um, July 15th, the Planning Board meeting has changed from July 8th uh, to discuss the, the ever- popular zoning maps. So that's going to be um, July 15th. And July 27th is the family day at Euro Beach from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. A motion to adjourn? Motion. Yes. What happened to the Harbor Day? Is that just out Because it was, we're going to probably do it in the fall because of the rain. The rain dates now, it's getting too warm. There's too much traffic on the, uh, you know, the public landing, so we're going to move it to the fall. What's the date? The 10th? September 21st. September 21st? September 21st? September 21st? On I'm a Tentative. Tentative. Motion to adjourn? Motion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Happy 4th of July.